Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our February 27th edition of Wall Street Winners. Unbelievable, but here we go. You, well, this is unbelievable, of course. All right, the market to, to continue to move lower, as I told you that it would next week. But now I'm changing my opinion. I think that uh, we might be weak early in the, uh, we might be weak early in the week. <laughs> Sounds repetitive, but we're going to start a new rally starting this week. And this rally should be strong enough, I think, to get back up towards the old highs at about 4,200 on the S&P, but at least up to 4,150. Okay, so we're going to get a mini bull here, but this bull is going to be, I think it's going to last for a couple of months. Now, the one thing, one thing, there's more than one thing that makes me nervous about my opinion, but look at the purple predictor here, still weak, not good at all in the S&P. Over in the Dow here, we can see we've broken these previous lows. Not good. We haven't, we haven't broken the lows we made in December, but we did break the January lows. And in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that selling pressure, the little red line, has gone above the green line, which is buying pressure. So the bears are in control of, of the Dow much more than in the S&P. What about the NASDAQ? NASDAQ also, I'm been looking for all three of the indices to make a rally for sure, but it'll probably be led by the NASDAQ. I think in particular, small cap uh, NASDAQ. Now look at this. Here's something very interesting. Notice, and we didn't see this in the other two indices, but we're seeing it here in the NASDAQ. And this is one of the reasons why I think the NASDAQ is going to outperform the other ones. Notice this. We, we make the high here in the beginning of February. We go down, we make a low. Purple predictor makes a low. We then rally up and make a high. Purple predictor rallies up and makes a high. Then the price drops down and we make a lower low, but the purple predictor does not, which means that the smart money came in and bought massively so they were able to hold the on balance volume from making a new low, but we still made a new low because of retail investors, okay? So the smart money's now buying the NASDAQ. That makes a lot of sense to me. Seasonality, we remain on a buy signal. Our sell signal's all the way down here, so that's obviously not going to happen very, very soon. But I said small cap, small cap. Look at this. This is IWM, which is the Russell 2000, which is small cap stocks. And it's making the same lower low and lower high that we saw in the S&P. But look at the, I mean, while, while the, the, the IWM is making a lower low, the on balance volume, the purple predictor is making a new high. Smart money is flooding into small cap NASDAQ. You got it? That's where you need to be. Go ahead. Go make some money. And once you've made the money, get a fully paid up subscription. All right. One of the reasons I'm getting much more bullish is that our little dipporama here, it's over. Now we're going back into the seasonal bull move, which should continue all the way into May. The market is right now not thinking that. Right now, the market is very nervous that the Fed is going to continue to raise rates higher and faster than they expected, which we told you about last year, and that's exactly what the Fed will do. But they'll calm down in the coming week and over the next couple of months because the economy will weaken. That will then lead to ideas that the Fed won't have to raise interest rates longer and higher than expected, and we'll get this bull market. But then the Fed will actually be more worried about inflation, and they will raise higher and longer than the market expects, and so we'll get a dip in May. You got that? Tomorrow's newspaper. That's how I do this, baby. That's how I do this. All right. We got a little bit of money coming out of the stock market and over into bonds. That's what this is telling us here. Um, over here, the, and they didn't want risk. So what we saw over the last week is conservative stocks like consumer staples did very, very well. And, um, you know, that, that, that if we're going to be into a bear move, that makes a lot of sense. But I think we're still in a major bull market. 
And I think we're going to start to see, as I say, small cap technology stocks start to do much better. Global shares dipped and got leaving a little bit of a gap on Friday, uh, but they're still holding up better than the American shares. Yield curve moving in a bullish direction, but it's not bullish. Okay, it's moving in a bullish direction, but it's so far negative that it doesn't really matter at this point. Bonds stabilized a little bit. Notice the purple predictor is also starting to move up. And so I don't think we're going to head much lower here. In fact, I think we're going to see a mini rally, not break the old highs that we made back in early February, but a little bit of a rally, maybe back up to 104 to 106, something like that. That's all. No big deal. Uh, and part of the reason is our bond key factors. Here you can see the blue line. That's telling us higher interest rates. The green line is 10-year treasuries. The chart back here, black and red, it's saying stable. Gold is saying lower interest rates, but still a bit, a bit saying higher interest rates. If we're going to see higher interest rates, or at least stable, then the dollar is going to continue to move higher. I'm the only guy on the face of the universe that told you that we were going to have a bear market and then told you there was going to be a bull market. Man. I, I keep telling you, tomorrow's newspaper, that's my key. And that, of course, means gold is going to head lower. Now, later in the year, I think we're going to have a major, major bull market in gold. And I'm thinking maybe second quarter. And we're going to make a lot of money on the long side in gold. But right now, it's better to be short than long. And oh, gosh, who knew it? But our unique coal, gold key indicators, all three are bearish. There's no doubt gold is going lower. Do not listen to the gold bugs. They are, I don't want to say always wrong, but most of the time. Crude oil, I'm getting more bullish. I'm not, I'm not, while, I, let's put it this way. There's a couple of things that it depends on. The big thing that's critical right now is if I didn't look at the U.S. economy, I would say we're going to 100 to $120 a barrel. But if the U.S. economy, along with the European economy, continues to weaken, that is going to reduce the demand for oil and offset the big increase in demand we're seeing from China. So I'm going to call myself a little bit bullish, but unless we break these highs that we made in January, I got to stand aside. Bitcoin starting to take a dive and whoa, look at what happened here. Purple predictor makes a high. Prices make a high. Then they both make a low. Then, pop. Here we see Bitcoin makes a new high, but Purple Predictor doesn't. Pump and dump. You got it? That's exactly what's happening here. It's a gigantic pump and dump. You are now going to see Bitcoin go back to 16,000. And in my opinion, it will probably go below 13. But I mean, look. I don't, I don't have a position in Bitcoin right now, but I think on Monday I'm going to get short. That's not an official prognostication or, or, or official recommendation, but this just looks like a pump and dump to me. All right, freebies, <laughs> watch the video in just a second. You're going to love it. <laughs> Hey, freebies, you know we love having you here every week watching the free edition of Wall Street Winners. But let me give you a little bit of a pitch of why you should actually upgrade and get the fully paid up member version. The big difference between them are two big differences between the freebie and the fully paid up version. Number one, the fully paid up version has more extensive analysis, which means that the prognostications are more accurate. And you get greater insights into what is actually happening in the market and why it's going to happen. But we're also talking about the dollar. We're talking about the bond market, the crypto market. But of course, we focus on the stock market. So better, greater, more analysis so you understand what's really going on and what, how reality is creating profits and how we're going to create profits in the market. Number two, and this is most important, there's actual trade recommendations. So in the freebie section, I say, well, I'm bullish on the dollar, or I think we're going to have a dip in the market and then an explosion to the upside. Whatever I'm saying, you want to be able to see what I'm actually doing in the real world. So I put out specific recommendations. Now, these recommendations are actionable. 
They tell you exactly what the stock is. They tell you exactly the price to enter, and I tell you exactly the price to exit. So you, there's no doubt you can take action and you can make money. We're now in, we're pushing three decades of publishing Wall Street winners, and every year has been a winning year. I don't care if it's a bull market. I don't care if it's a bear market. My job, because I am a professional investor, and I do the same trades that I recommend to you, by the way. I'm putting the same orders in. So you and I, we're going to see the same profits. But here's the point. As a pro trader, my job is to make money trading every day. Every every day. I wish I could make it every day. Every year, okay? Every month. Because I need to know I want to buy steak. I don't want to eat oatmeal. You got it? All right. The difference between Wall Street winners and all the other newsletters out there are, number one, I'm a professional trader. They often are amateurs. Number two, I ran the top performing global macro hedge fund in the world. How many of them have ever run a hedge fund, let alone a top performing one? I, Hulbert, rated this newsletter, Wall Street Winners, as the best performing newsletter ever. Number three. I also manage the number one growth mutual fund in the United States. Quick, how many newsletter writers have ever managed a mutual fund, let alone a high-performing one? So what you're getting is my 50 years of experience at picking stocks and making money. That's why you should subscribe. This is a newsletter that doesn't cost you anything. Yes, you have to pay money every month, but the profits from the trades should more than cover the cost of the subscription. So this is a free newsletter if you take action using the trades that I put in here. Anyway, I hope to see you uh, upgrade and become not just a freebie member. You know we love you, but we'd love to even have you come as a fully paid up member and get even more value than you're getting now. All you have to do is go to WSW. 2021.com. That's WSW2021.com. Sign up. Let's get going. I want to share greater analysis and great trades with you. We'll talk to you later. Thanks very much, Freebies. You know we love you.